the fourth edition of Paris-Roubaix from Avex with the biggest race that Lotte Kopecky has never won. Indeed, the biggest race SD Works have never won. It has the last 17 sectors that you'll be familiar with, including two five-star sectors, Monson, Pavel, and Carrefour de l'Arbre, and, of course, the iconic finish in the velodrome, starting in Dunerk. It's about 150 kilometers long, which also elevates the importance of the Tilwa and Oshi les Oshi sectors. Mariana Voss in a fine vein of form before this race. The world champ, look. Lotte Kopecky in the all-white skin suit and defending champion Alison Jackson coming back, returning last year, handing out some signatures. Good weather, warm, 23 degrees and no rain. In fact, the cobbles seem to be in remarkably good condition. There were not very many crashes at all this year. And we saw from Sector 1 a familiar format. DSM, the team bossing it on the front for Pfeiffer for Georgie, Lotte Kopecky right there in top five positions, as well as Little Trek for Elisa Balsamo and uh, Ellen Van Dyke. So it's really three teams, SD Works, DSM, and Trek. And honestly, Vibas was following wheels. It was Kopecky the offenser who nearly came a cropper there it was 70 k's to go, attacking on the Tilwa four-star sector, creating a selection with Schweinberger, Georgie, about too many treks. She stops. All comes back. She also has noticed something's, something's not right, maybe from that uh, near mishap, and she does some adjustments on the fly with the old Allen key, maybe some loose stem bolts. But look at this, 60.7 k's to go, 60.6. By the time they start or she 400 meters later, she's at the front. Or, like, her ability to be in position for all of these sectors was incredible. Or, indeed, the other teams didn't really push the pace when she was off the back. There was like 65k, 60k to go, but still, always in the first five wheels on any of the sectors, pushing the pace with 54k to go again and creating a selection they would have been really happy with. With Vibas there holding on just about, but she gets dropped halfway through. And Voss starts to put the hammer down, but then with no Vibas, look, Lotte Kopecky's got her card to play. She doesn't pull with this group, because if she pulled with this group of Schweinberg and Georgie, probably they're never going to be seen again, unless Ellen Van Dyke can bring them back. So get to Mons en Pavel. Remarkably, not that much action. Van Dyke goes on the front, sets a tempo. All the runners I've mentioned already are in the wheel. And I was really surprised not to see more anticipations out of the group because the pace really came out of the peloton you see all these riders coming back jade veal fdj did the right thing going up the road uh but canyon shram opted to chase her phoenix de koenig opted to chase her and you got these big wide roads you've got carrefour de Labra and carrefour and pavel coming you've got kopecky in the group who's already been creating splits and yeah van dyke tries to move but then dsm they don't really have a sprinter here Lotte Kopecky knows she can lean on them, and she was isolated. There's no Lorena Vibas here, there's no Madras, there's no Royce. She was isolated on the asphalt roads during this phase, but she played her cards right, and no one really attacked her. And even then, she went back to the car. This is the world champ, best classics rider in the world. 30 k's to go, we've got Carrefour de Labra, Carrefour and Pavel coming up. And no one uses this opportunity. Phoenix de Koenig, Canyon Schramm, Visma even, Age Insurance, DSM... To anticipate and it's a flat peloton who don't chase jade veal so i was surprised that they yeah i would have uh, put quebec on a bit of pressure there personally but uh armor crack tries to int- anticipate like i mentioned fdj suez were trying to do that van dyke goes with her and pfeiffer georgie gets tangled up with a teammate not sure exactly what happened but clearly the bars were, were tangled and not the time you want to be chasing before Kamfan and pavel having to chase back. She was in position in the end, but at what cost? She's there with Elisa Balsamo glued to Kopecky's wheel. Voss starts to push when she sees Georgie's dropped, and they get across to Van Dyke and Amber Crack. And that's the benefit of the anticipation from Crack. It probably gets her a top 10 result in that she goes into Mons en Pavel in the wheel, and there's not as many attacks anymore. And indeed, Van Dyke starts to sort of apply a steady tempo. Georgie's coming back, but Van Dyke's tempo is too strong. She's got her sprinter now off the back form world champion, Elisa Balsamo. She doesn't realize yet. It's not a, an easy thing to go onto the radio with one hand. You see Balsamo tried to do it there, nearly slipped out. 
And Van Dyke still hadn't realized that she's got her off the back and she's really cracking on Carfield Labra. Voss realizes it. She puts the hammer down. Gapecki also not too long later on the next section, I think goes over the top after Voss accelerated, trying to keep Van Dyke and Balsamo behind. But somewhat curiously, with Balsamo off the back, Gapecki still refuses to relay with Vivas quite far behind 32 seconds. Uh, Capecchi still doesn't pull. Maybe the right thing to do if you're that worried about Voss sprint, but also you're letting a second quick sprint to come back. That's the somewhat surprising and risky thing in not refusing to pull with Voss, Krak and Van Dyke. You're letting Balsamo come back, which is a bit of a risk. It also allows Van Dyke to then try to anticipate. She tries once, gives up, and then we're going to go to the velodrome. No one else is going to move. Of course, they don't want Lorena Vibers, that is Trek, to come back or Georgie Krak or uh, Mariana Voss. So in the velodrome, Bell Lap, Georgie stuck on the front a bit early, but Kopecky very, very deep. She's almost in a precarious boxed-in position at that point, but Balsamo jumps really, really early. That creates a pocket for her to slip through onto Georgie's wheel as the trio are sprinting. Mariana Voss getting into the drops very late with 100 meters to go. Gapecki on the high banking just as it straightens out, launches round Balsamo with the slingshot and wins not just by a, a, a wheel, by over a bike length. I've never seen someone come around that late with such a speed differential. Voss and Balsamo went really, really early, so early, in fact, that Georgie, with the well-timed throw, takes the podium away from Voss, but Kopecki gets it done, the world champ, winning ahead of Balsamo, Georgie, Voss, Krak, then Van Dijk. Vibers won the bunch of behind with Berto, Lene, and Le Corde de Billot. Here's what Kopecki had to say after the stage. Yeah, this was the goal of the season, so... Um... Yeah, then to also do it is, um, yeah, it's really nice. Um, yeah, the, how much confidence the team gave me, um, actually, already the whole season, but especially last week. Um, my teammates tried to make me love the last two days as much as possible. And just, I mean, I could just really feel how much they believed in, in me being able to, to win this race. And then, yeah, they did an amazing job. And then having Lorena Wiebes in the end uh, in the second group was... Yeah, was for me maybe the key. Can you tell us how it happens on the velodrome? <laughs> yeah, it's 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 always nervous. I mean, uh, you were here with yeah two very fast sprinters like uh, Vos and uh, Balsamo, so yeah, you're never sure. But um, one moment I thought, uh, yeah, now I, I I'm boxed in, but I had to start their sprint pretty early and. Uh, yeah, I just, uh, I could keep keep sprinting. <laughs> but it's the win that has eluded SD Works for the past three years. They get it done today. Capecchi didn't look the best in the Tour of Flanders, but I guess this was a, a race. I can't wait to see her in the Olympics and World Championships again later this year. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you with the recap of the men's tomorrow. Ciao.